From an undisclosed location in the Upper Michigan Peninsula, it's Beyond the Near Horizon, featuring Colonel Stephen Prather. Now here's your host, Colonel Stephen Prather. Thank you, Stephanie. Welcome to all of you from across our sacred home world. We're pleased that you're joining us for the next little while as we journey together into the darkness beyond the crest of the vanishing point and infinitely onward. It is Tuesday, March 25th. Tonight, we have joining us Psychic Holly Effetal and retired health inspector Pete Passamiro. They co-host a program called Eternal Fires, where they investigate haunted food carts and concessions at fairs, concerts, and sporting events. It airs Sundays on KFLKFM up in Fort Simpson, Northwest Territories, in the Great White North. Amazing work they do. And if ever there was a gold mine for the wandering dead, food carts are like hornet's nests for that stuff. Alive or not, I'll just say flat out, if the smell of fresh pretzels hits me, I'll come running, or floating, as it were. Before all that, birthdays and letters, of course. So, lots of politics tonight. Returns in from the presidential primaries. Teddy Kennedy seems to have locked down New York and Connecticut pretty easily. Will he catch Carter? Hard to say. I'm not crazy about mathematics or Serbian ankle massages, but 547 to 276 is pretty darn steep. Interestingly, though, Mr. Chepquidic came up last night during a discussion with naturopath physicist Dr. Raquel Ofremart, who was on for another installment of tax returns for the dead. And after we were off air, Yuri asked her to try JFK. Ofremart reminded us, of course, that she only does tax returns for the deceased. John Kennedy, as we know from mountains of evidence, much of it published in our newsletter, is very much alive. Need I repeat again, following that elaborate song and dance in Beely Plaza, the president has been managing various service stations up and down the back roads of the Carolinas for almost 20 years now. I've long observed a policy that while we're compelled to, to report on this, I, I'm firm that I have no interest in getting any more specific than we have. I, he won't get my vote, but there's a better chance of him potentially running for a second term if we let the poor man get a breather. And I, I will say that the afro is really not an ideal look for him. Everyone deserves to relax, but I think he can go too far. So... Dr. Orfamar then offered to do Teddy. I explained pretty gently that the younger Kennedy was in the middle of a primary and very much alive. As it happens, Raquel keeps four by sixes of political figures in the waistband of her undergarments. My mother does the same. And she produced a glossy of good old Theodore and pointed out that his face had become increasingly flushed in appearance the last few years. And having looked at the photo, that's certainly the case. So what's afoot there? Well, apparently the beginning of this change traces back to the 26th of August, 1977. On that date was manifested, according to the doctor, something she refers to as a trickle-vine triangle of power, which she named after her departed mother-in-law. And folks, unlike the Wisconsin saber-tooth boy, there is a photograph of this thing happening. A picture was taken of Kennedy with... Michael Jackson, and Shirley MacLaine at the annual RFK tennis tournament after party. As it was told to us, something paranormal was clearly guiding things. It's a day or two later, and Raquel is sitting at breakfast with the Wichita Forager open. All of this back in 77. Now, it would have escaped her attention entirely if she hadn't had a piece of Eula B. Come and See Link Sausage break off the end of her fork and hop around on the page like a gymnast who took an extra ballistic syringe to the rump. Magical little piece of pork, though, because when she reached down to retrieve it, staring right up from the page was Teddy, Michael, and Shirley, all inside a greasy triangle. Well, this is not the type of thing you ignore, obviously. Whether you consider it the threshold nature of the divine or the beginnings of an alchemy sulfur cross, the power is pouring off this image. 
Uh, Yuri and I did some digging, and, and either the senator has been chewing cot leaves, or he ran into the wood demon Lavatar, which, as we know, haunts the stacks at the National Archives. And personally, my vote is he turned the wrong corner and that sucker bit him in the neck. Now, I'm as conservative as the, as the day is long, but would it be a, a bad thing to have a demon-inhabited corpse as president? A uh, pisadera, if you're familiar, ran for the Chamber of Deputies in the Brazilian elections back in 78. And for one, they could claim it as an achievement for women, and second to that, what better motivation for constituents keeping in shape than the fear of being paralyzed and deflated to death. No turkey pot pie is worth that. But uh, sadly, the good people of Sao Paulo lacked the backbone for that maneuver. All the same, birthdays from around the bend. When we return, we'll see you on the other side. If you have both your feet, and I have a feeling that you may be preoccupied with the same thing I am whenever I have company over at the house, Dinner is over, and after a long day, it's time to slip off those Florsheim Imperials and relax. There's just one problem, and its name is Relentless Penetrating Odors. Up until January of this year, I used and thoroughly enjoyed Green Glow Radiance, which we had previously advertised on this show. Unfortunately, due to a misprint in the directions and the 1,132 deaths across the country that resulted, That amazing product has been rounded up and seized by the U.S. Marshals. While I think this is an idiotic overreach by an incompetent federal government, it leaves me in a bind. As I've mentioned before, you could leave a slaughtered yak in our living room all summer, and my beautiful partner Marisol wouldn't sniff a nostril. Friends and acquaintances are another matter altogether, however. They will be offended, and if we taunt them, which I am known to do after a second or third can of Party 7, they will sue. That's where I'm relieved to say that survivalist Knife Richards is not only a regular on the show, but someone I consider a friend. We were discussing open-air surgery at my optometrist's baby shower when Knife placed a small plastic bag of unassuming brown pellets in my hand. He whispered to me, I feel so close to you right now, I wish we could be alone so I could explore your body and then explain that I held in my hand Happy Accident, the new product from Knife Richards LLC. I'm excited, because he's flipped the chessboard into the crab salad with this one. He realizes, like any great tactician, that distraction is the name of the game. And folks, I had only to crack each pellet gently to activate them. I easily slipped these suckers down the back of Marisol's elderly grandmother's blouse, in the pocket of disgraced police officer Lance Eldon, and even into the open mouth of a sleeping child. No one, and I mean no one, was interested in my foot odor by the time I settled down to filing my calluses. Do me a favor, and win your battle with the aromas today. Call 1-800-687-8437 or 1-800-OVER-THERE, O-V-R-T-H-E-R. Operators are standing by to take your order every Monday evening, 10.30 p.m. to 11 p.m. Aleutian time. A two-bag set of these amazing little balls will only run you $2.55. Save even more when you subscribe and have these drop in your lap every month. Check, money order, and diner's club accepted. Get your friends lifting cushions and sniffing pits today with Happy Accident. Reminder that we're coming up quick on our Lewitt Devil Grouper watch party up at Spirit Lake in Washington on May 18th. This is the largest and possibly oldest living example of a saltwater fish. It just lost its frickin' head and went freshwater. A spirit is up to 190 feet deep in places, so it's no wonder you end up with a massive vertebrate out there swallowing the occasional canoeist. They'll be excited to hear that we've got a report from the National Forest Service up there 
in Skamania County. Measuring a 4.2 magnitude earthquake just five days ago, I think. And we're talking about a fish with some grade A mental problems to make that kind of noise. And it's uh, about to plow down the photo mat, in my opinion. And I, for one, am going to be right there on the shoreline with binoculars trained. And we'll finally get a photograph of this thing to convince the uh, unconvincible. So I do hope some of you listening can make it. Plenty of spots left as we can accommodate up to 200 out there on the floodplain. Just send a check or money order for $849.99 to Lewitt Devil Grouper Watch, Care of the Organism Consortium, P.O. Box 450045000, South Memphis, Tennessee 38106. Well, that will cover a tent and a paper sack of canned goods, which I think is a pretty good deal. Uh, does not include airfare, tent stakes, rope, or water. All right, good stuff. On to birthdays, and not a bad law today. And continuing our Kennedy theme, born on this day, now dead, Jack Ruby. As I understand, he was a topless dancer, which must have been pretty rare for that era. But Dallas has always been a pretty open-minded place, I guess. Sportscaster, Howard Cosell, is 62 today. Well, I mostly know him for Battle of the Network Stars, but I understand he's got his handprints on a few side ventures. So, whatever pays the bills. Gloria Steinem is 46. Probably controversial, but I gotta be honest, her ads actually make me not want to buy jeans. I also tend to look undernourished when I wear denim, which is a Bit of a setback. There we go. Queen of Soul. Aretha Franklin is 38. Not sure if anyone listening has been to that Aretha Franklin auto body repair up in Marquette. I picked up a used Ford Komodo and had them paint the show logo on the side of it. At WDMC 980, the bark, up there in Otsego as a panel van. They, they painted up super sharp. What was that? What was that, Yuri? Arthur Franklin. Okay. No relation. Well, the whole thing matters as much as hose down French bread at this point, given that the Komodo was stolen. Now, the private dick I hired believes it was stolen by a rogue Amish community up near Lake Linden to do research of some kind. I have no intention of removing all my body hair, so no way to really get in there to find out. In a weird way, I hope they get some use out of it. Continuing on a musical theme, musician Elton John is 33 today. Somewhat connected to that, I've got to admit a little bit of a downer. Psychic fisherman John Tangy Elton has been reported missing off the coast of, and I'm, I'm going to butcher this, nuclear, nu, nu, nugget, nip, Ah, Nepasaguit Bay near Bathurst, New Brunswick. These people have got to do something about these names. All the same, JT, as he likes to be called, disappeared in a brand new Sonny Nelson 50 shrimp trawler. Mid-January is not sanctioned shrimping season, but he had a fantastic idea, I think, to harvest frozen shrimp in the wild, which saves a ton of overhead. And super sad, the trawler had a cassette deck in it, brand new speakers. JT had four boxes of cassettes on board. Just an amazing collection. And an awful waste. Uh, he has been gone two and a half months, so there's still a shot at finding the boat intact, and JT, of course. Friends and family of the show now. Anarchist Dominique Zawadi Sang is 40. And since our chat a few years back, she's Kind of reinvented herself a bit and is now editor for Slick Wheels magazine. And I definitely recommend the feature piece she wrote for the November 79 issue on the Sears weather handler, Steel Belted Radials. It sneaks up on you, but there's a strong argument that the political repression of the state apparatus kept that from being a better tire. Compelling stuff. Bricklayer, op hair, and political analyst Dale Lindy II is 56. Well, we don't dwell too much on the hostage crisis in Tehran, but I think 
Two Mondays ago, we really dug into that Ted Koppel America Held Hostage Day Counter, which Dale believes is at least three to four days off. And I have to agree with him. I mean, let's not lose sight of the big picture and get, you know, get the basic stuff right. History is watching. And I, I think in a real sign of desperation, ABC changed the name of that show last night. I wrote it down here, Night, night Flight, Night Light, something like that. I got a quarter that says it lasts six months, maybe. All right, let's see what else we've got here. Child Prodigy, Irene Lupe, is 11. And we consider doing a remote down in Peaksville after we chatted with Irene on Open Lines Night about a year back. We were set to do a double bill with Perry Como conspiracist Dan Hollis until he up and walked out the doors of the Serling Steakhouse out there straight into a cornfield. I never came back. I have to assume he didn't really understand that the fork throwing is part of the dining experience there. Kind of a missed opportunity. Irene sent us a jack-in-the-box set with the heads of the Oak Ridge Boys for Christmas, though. That was kind of nice. A little gruesome, admittedly, for some taste, but I think we have some real talent in that girl, so sending her happy thoughts this birthday. All right, when we return, listener letters. We hope to see you back. Have you been feeling down about yourself lately? Well, you might have some very valid points, but how about adding a sprinkle of magic in your everyday life that will keep you away from your never-ending stream of gumption traps and hang-ups? Paul saint Legesse and the Paris-based Acne Vulgaris Company are back again with a must-have addition to the important spaces in your life. It's a system that will have you quickly feeling as if you are actually appreciated and acknowledged. It's the space-aged saint Legesse Torso Tag Team, and it's your motion-activated, high-fidelity, from the waist up, team of home companions available in titanium ivory, camel, charcoal, and otherworldly navy or malachite. When you open your eyes in the morning, the sheets droop seductively over the curve of the smooth shoulders and back of Tammy Torso. You hear the words, good morning, in Tammy's cutesy voice, radiating from the speaker atop her dent-resistant, boron carbide head, outfitted with your choice of decals. Go ahead and cuddle a little. No one has to know. You'll immediately enjoy a smooth and mellow taste, perfectly seasoned into the delicately contoured surfaces. And, with only the waist up to work with, there'll be no inconvenient surprises. Set it on the included hot plate during the day so you always come home to a warm body under the covers. A shower and dressing later, Tip Torso is waiting at the kitchen table to greet your wary entry, always ready with a chipper attitude and a corny joke or two to set you off to work with a chuckle. And when those middle-of-the-day blues strike at your garment marketing job, have a glance at the window. There, several hundred feet away, with a line of sight to your office, is Todd Torso who just transmitted into your complimentary earpiece, I can see you wherever you are in there. It's a peace of mind you only get when you know someone is always looking after you. Send a check or money order with your 1% down payment of sixteen twenty-five fifty-nine to San Leges Torso Tag Team, care of Daredevil Maria Trinidad Memorial Productions, 16 Pressing Boulevard, Cody, Wyoming, 82414. Drop off and installation are always at night, so once you order, be on your toes. Just allow 2 to 46 weeks for delivery. Regain your sanity right now with the San Leges Torso Tag Team from the Acne Vulgaris Company. Last Friday, we got completely bogged down with that skin paste discussion. I didn't get to comment on the Carter administration's boycott of the upcoming Summer Olympics. I haven't talked to anyone that thinks this is a good idea. Stephanie's adopted sister was set to compete in the 800-meter horse pull. Now that's off, so it's been kind of subdued around the studio. I had plans to have my sainted mother man the manure bag and 
I'll just say it's never a good idea to take away things, folks, that age you're looking forward to. Unintentional tyranny, folks. Awful stuff. I do have plans to take her down, uh, my mother, that is, for some pistol hunting. But uh, I'll be honest, I, I can still tell she's disappointed. And it's dull on all ends, considering that she's really not great at finding cover and concealing her position. Oh, make it work, I suppose. Let's pull the ripcord here, then, and get on to letters. First letter comes from the hand of Marge Isabella from Gallows Picnic, New Hampshire. Dear Colonel Prather, I have been up until recently a resident of the peninsula and a listener to your program since its first month on the air. I've waited four years now for you to address a deceitful practice of yours, which has laid in the open since you started broadcasting. My husband runs a phone receiver cleaning business, and a mere six months into your show, I was listening one night in his workshop staring down at the keypad of a Model 500. As you were interviewing a young boy who had invented a propane-powered deodorizer, you gave out the number for the higher plane hotline. I had a propane corn pad remover at that time, and so was immediately interested and started dialing. To my surprise, I connected to some poor man named Lucero Yannick. When you call this man's house any time of the day or night, he shouts, My name is Lucero Yannick, and you will burn in hell for tormenting me. There are always at least two women shouting in the background. Why do I remember this so well, you may ask? I realized every time I dialed 1 800 438 4444, I was reaching this man's place of business, which is also his home in Loose Shelf Island, Georgia. He makes custom wicker fishing lures, and he has been buried in calls meant for your ears. Colonel Prather, let me be clear, your number doesn't spell what you think it does. I think this man or his family would have already sued you many times over if he didn't spend as much time on the bluegrass circuit as he does. She goes on here. I know this must be a shameful embarrassment, but, you'll, but your number should be 1-800-438-4477 to truly spell what you say it does. I believe you will do the right thing and stop perpetuating this lie. She closes, if you're ever in Gallows Picnic, I will leave my husband, three children, and toddler to spend a night of passion with you, Marge. Well, thanks for your letter, Marge. Uh, the fact is, is we get around a 60-40 split with our dial-ins, with the majority of folks choosing to spell it out in their head every time, which is a bit of a surprise. Uh, we've always been practical and realistic on this show, and the planning has reflected that. When, when we got underway... Some time back, we had a lot of debt outstanding to the Atlanta Children's Choir Guild for clearing them out of their less pure heroin stock. They've long since been out of the smack trade, but back in 75, let's just say we'd run up the tab and they were not going to extend any more credit. Now, the real shame of it is that I don't actually use the stuff. I just got addicted to buying it. Love how they package it. Well, I cut a pretty darn lucrative deal with Dr. Pugnalata, I think it was, down there to use our errant call routing as leverage in ACCG business dealings. I think you have to admire that creativity. And since we've some time ago paid off the black tar tab, it's become a nice source of funding for our breakfast croissants. You don't fix a faucet that doesn't leak, I suppose. I will be, by the way, in Gallows Picnic in July, as it happens, but I'm getting thigh injections, so you'll have to stay behind the glass. Do appreciate the letter. Next up, from LPP, and writing from an undisclosed location, the lower Michigan Peninsula. Dear Stephen, I recognize that a lot has gone wrong in our lives, and that you probably won't want to continue reading this letter, realizing that I haven't actually been dead all these years. I hope that I might speak to you as a human being with feelings, and that staying with your mother and subjecting myself to her scientific curiosities had become unbearable. When she asked me to eat grits using my hands and speak only in grunting noises, it was a bridge too far, and I resolved to leave. It was I who left the bloody footprints near the chest of drawers. It was I who hung a shredded cummerbund on the telephone wires near the mayor pro Tim's house, and I who set the explosives that destroyed the depasteurizing factory, and as a result, the taxpayer subsidized Herb Albert sculpture. I do remember that goes on here, I hope you can forgive me for sitting back and watching you flee from a murder rap for a man that wasn't dead. Even now, I'm only revealing this so that I can ask you for some monetary assistance to make my way in this world. To that end, I would appreciate if you could leave me three folded $5 bills in a Fanta can behind the Tupelo Funny Comedy Club on Montessori Boulevard 
in Little Cleveland, 20 clicks southwest of Bee Swarm Lake. Please forgive me enough to help me out financially. Love, Dad. Appreciate the letter. I generally look for any excuse for drop-offs. I just like the whole exercise and ambiance of it. And I'm ready to pull the trigger on this, honestly, but I, I've got a bit of an issue we're going to have to sort out. As many of you know, listen, I'm a big Fanta guy. We normally stock the variety packs by the pallet. But I'm in a no-win scenario right now because I've burned through the orange and strawberry and grape, and now I'm left with only gruesome pineapple staring me down. Well, these cast-offs have filled that into the warehouse, and I have got to get through those suckers. Yuri helped me work out a plan to drink 16 per day, and he projected that if I did that seven days a week, I would be through them all by August 1986. Truth is, I can't get through a single can. When I last took a sip, I had a pretty terrifying Liza Minnelli fever dream. It got me paralyzed, to be honest with you. The good news is that I am seeking counseling on this. I'm going to take six months, maybe a year, to really get behind the pineapple Fanta thing. My best advice, tape a note to the refrigerator if you've got one, and shoot over another letter around April 1987 or so. I don't know what timetable you're operating on, but I think we'll have a better shot at getting a moving spring in that year, allowing for my little reset. So, thanks again for the note. Third letter is from Jesse in Spring Nightmare, Tennessee. Jesse writes, Dear Mr. Prather, I want to thank you for introducing me, along with all of your other fans, to the Past Life Regression Time Goggles. Glad you like those, Jesse. Pentagram-shaped wheels, sorry, reels, are an inspiration, and I particularly enjoy the Dead Stars of Samba collection. After meeting with my sister's financial advisor, I am convinced that I am reliving the storied life of Jean Astruc, who is considered by many to be the founder of modern dermatology. The problem is that there are no reels in that category. I have reached out to Dan's Past Life LLC and received no response. So I'm hoping you can help through your influence have a reel produced for early French dermatology or venereal disease all-stars. Thanks loads, Jesse. Well, Jesse, we thank you for the letter. Sad to report that Dan's Past Life LLC actually went out of business back in summer 78, I think. He runs a consulting firm now that helps businesses anticipate market changes, as I understand. Well, there's no more scrumpy in that bucket, I'd say you need to consider a hallucinogenic alternative, if I may offer. One of our sponsors, Migratory Facial, recently had a storage mishap that I believe will work to your benefit. You can buy an iron tin of blemish remover from them for about 15 cents at any Lucky Killer Salvage in the Great Lakes region. Full confession, it actually darkens and intensifies blemishes, but it will get you tripping like Chevy Chase. I'd say give that a go. Even if you don't see old John, you can look forward to a pretty satisfying conversation with no one. Well, please do keep these flying in our direction, folks. Up next, our conversation with Holly Evital and Pete Passamero. Come on back. Did you used to get along better with your neighbor? Have simple political or religious disagreements of the past morphed into impassable, venomous division? While I would normally suggest a bloodletting of some kind, which is generally the natural way of things, I've been impressed by a new approach to this old problem. What if you could stick it to your ridiculous neighbor and manage a healthier and more vibrant lawn at the same time? With one true friend watering system from Moore's Gibbs & Hilly, inventors of the popular home sauce maker, you can do just that. Route any standard water hose to the provided one true friend filtrator extension and then start watering your lawn as you normally would, front and back. Then all you have to do is wait. The One True Friend watering system does the rest, slow releasing a proprietary mixture of minerals and compounds. MG&H's new spin on time-tested acid abrasives from the shipping industry are about to prove they should be the duck you don't slaughter. Folks, this stuff means business and will penetrate most water pipes and other inconvenient boundaries, infiltrating the drinking, cooking, and bathing supplies of the unexpected treacherous human filth that surrounds you. In as little as 12 hours, you'll find your agitator of old far more compliant and generally sluggish of movement. And you'll have little to worry about since you've already been taking the One True Friend Magic Shield additive pills each day that will protect you, your immediate family, 
and any others in the surrounding area relying on the water table. Get ready for a suddenly apologetic and easy to deceive neighbor afterwards. I managed to get the renowned psychiatrist that lives next door to me to sign over his power of attorney to my infant niece. Don't delay, break out that checkbook and write one out for $39.95 to get your One True Friend watering system and a two-week supply of the One True Friend Magic Shield additive delivered to your doorstep. Mail that to OTFW System by MG&H, 1975 Nurse Vengeance Street, Sour Soup, New York, 10916. Commit to meaningful conflict resolution today, the One True Friend Watering System way. My next guests have taken off like wildfire up north. An increasing number of Canadian radio stations broadcast the program they co-host called Eternal Fires. Psychic Holly Effetal cut her teeth as a wide receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals, putting up 2,000-yard receiving campaigns despite back-to-back 4-12 records in 1978 and 1979. She left that promising career abruptly to serve as Shadow Minister of Small Business and Tourism, all without the knowledge or permission of the Canadian government. Retired Health Inspector Pete Passamero hails from Mournful Rock, Minnesota, where he swallowed a belly full of the dark side of buffet heat lamp compliance issues and labor contract printer paper jams before his work as an unlicensed podiatrist. Connecting to us from CFLKFM up in Fort Simpson, Northwest Territories, let me welcome you both to the show. Can you hear me okay up there? Hello. I've got to say, I haven't been this excited since the In Search of Firewalker episode. I'm glad to see some of these topics getting airtime up there. Glad to be here. There are many misconceptions about what we do, uh, so we're very eager to explore it. What she said. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed the cassette you folks sent me up, uh, your interview with Fern Mothfinder, I believe it was, the immortal mail carrier. I mean, what a crazy life, even if she never met anyone famous that wasn't Canadian. Well, a life is an unpredictable thing. Yep. For all of us mortals, you can't carry mail the whole time, you know. You have to make arrangements, financial arrangements. Mm. It's nice to have some income stability. Did you feel that way about your program after a year or two? Well, not to undress the coyote too much, but it's not really what you'd call my primary income yet. Uh, okay. Yeah, can, you, can you tell me how the two of you came together for the show? You seem like an odd couple. Well, as you mentioned, I had walked away from football and gone into government. And Pete... Oh, yeah. I was dead a bus to a cafeteria manager in Ottawa for his for bus transmission parts he was keeping in the walk-in. Mm. I was... Heading out to the car to get another box of latex gloves uh, when I bumped into Helen, and uh, she popped the question. Wow. Wow, really? Yes, the big one. What would happen if you were hit and killed by a drunk driver? That's a good icebreaker. I said I didn't have a plan, you know. He took off from there. And how did you get into the paranormal? Well, we had to pick something, and we eventually landed there. The important thing was to honestly explore some difficult questions. What were we going to do if we had to leave our loved ones behind? Well, that makes a lot of sense. Our petroglyph expert, Foster Doran, didn't realize he had passed on years ago until he tried to open a dance studio. Now, I was the first show was about the Brown Mountain Lights in North hmm. Carolina. Is that right? I think that's I think that's right, but it's n not exactly what you think. We were more of a public affairs program at that point, and we were concerned about the availability of safe standard equipment. You don't properly illuminate your entry area. You could be liable for that sort of thing. I'm, I'm sure you have that kind of thing covered, you know, working at a studio. 
I know they keep a couple of sugar gliders out there uh, in front after nightfall. It seems to unnerve most of the litigious crowd. You absolutely have to protect your assets, especially if you're the decision maker. I have to say, I sense in the electrical impulses I'm picking up that you are that decision maker, even from this distance. Well, if you go by Quartermaster, you know, that comes as no surprise. A colonel's fine. So you're probably used to structure that. It is an honorific, but I'd, I'd like to think the Yemenis picked up on my magnetism. Oh, we have. You must have high standards for the people you do business with. You have a, a wife and, and children to think of, right? Marisol, sure. Uh, if children come up, then it's obviously going to be in the salad tosser. We must have been misinformed. Uh, you don't have children. We have about seven altogether now between us, but we keep them geographically isolated, which seems to do the trick. Sounds like it. Save some money. Speaking of dependence, I understand you have a set of children's records for crochet learning with the Peruvian Nazca lines coming out. Is that right? We do, we do. We're starting with the killer whale first in the series, and we're working with the caterer for the Commodores, so we're very excited. Yeah, you, cro you crochet little holiday goers for it to eat. Really good set. Well, I love the realism. Uh, now, I assume we're still on for the psychic reading when we return from break. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, great. Well, after the break, folks, we spelunk into the psychic realm with the host of Eternal Fires at the Tether. We'll see you then. Marisol and I recently had all of the children in our neighborhood over to watch Goodbye Death Farm with Chuck Bronson's brother, Flint Bronson, playing the part of an enraged auto mechanic. Actually, it may not have been related to Chuck Bronson, but it was a good little flick. It takes place in the little town of Boone, Utah, where all of the residents are unknowingly driving cocaine around in their tires. As I was explaining to the kids why Below is so alluring to people across the country, I had a moment of real self-awareness. We are not teaching our children nearly enough. While my chat with the kids was merely to distract the audience while Marisol liberated their parents' wallets and loose jewelry to reimburse our food, beverage costs, and the use of my orthodontist 8mm setup, I thought of our own medically documented children that Marisol and I have both empowered to live a life of freedom. Not all parents have that kind of foresight, though, and there are a whole class of folks out there that have chosen to care for children they may have birthed directly and want to give them the best chance of succeeding. And our friends at Kimberly Darrell Funeral Center have come to the rescue with a board game. Yes, that's right, a board game. Your Street is the name of that game, and it's going to give your children the healthy mix of fear and distrust they'll need to navigate the world. The game begins with a simple shuffle and dealing of the cards. Roll the dice and find out that the action starts early. Little Stuart lands on the crossfire square and rolls again to determine the damage. He picks a damage card from the stack. It reads like a gripping classic noir novel. After a hopping Saturday night at Beacon's Liquor, there's a rowdy crowd in the parking lot. Little Stuart looks up at the wrong time and gobbles up a few rounds from a 38 special. And now he eats out of a tube. Let your little one determine if he can find a reason to continue or if he was better off perishing in that hail of bullets. Well, Abby rolls next, and lands on the Lookout Motel, and while it gives her no pleasure to prostitute her own mother, that rent is not paying itself. Well, these are the kind of hard lessons your kids are just not going to learn in the suburbs. Drop into any of the Kimberly Darrell Funeral Centers in the Upper Peninsula to purchase the Your Street board game for $9.99. You get a truckload of value for that $9.99, that's the playing board, profile cards, a life's die is cast dice set, 20 plastic bags, and an evidence collection kit. Mention Beyond the Near Horizon and also receive a free absorbent sponge that normally retails for 36 cents, suitable for dabbing most serious wounds, along with a 10% coupon of the first installment of your down payment towards the Kimberly Darrell Platinum Angel Power resting plot. Prepare your child for the coming melee. It's your street from Kimberly Darrell Funeral Centers who remind you it's never too early to picture the finish line. Brief follow-up on last night's show for the folks living in New Akron, Missouri. The Valyrian craft we spotted heading in your direction down I-35 
just past Overland Park, and they seem to be dumping some sort of refuse. Tim Delph, our spotter at the Crockett Bounce Land location out there, took a shower in the stuff, and he left a message on our machine that he's getting a tetanus shot after he finishes up some tamale making at his mother-in-law's. This stuff takes a patient hand. Now back with the hosts of Eternal Fires. All right, I'm ready to go under, so um, how do you want to get started here, Holly? Well, first I have a question for you. May I call you Sebastian? Sure. Do you wish to connect with any specific spirits in this reading? I normally don't drink during the show. Anyone no longer living that you wish to connect to? Yes, the elderly man who stole the last half of my jelly sandwich off the stoop when I was six. Okay. No way he made it out of the 50s. He's got to be in the ether, and, and I'm ready to lay into him like Buford Pusser, if you'll we, forgive me. We will do our best. We will do our best. As, as I am picking up really strong frequencies, I'm going to forego the tarot. Is that, a, is that okay? Not a problem. I, I think we prefer guests not to eat on the air. That really kind of ruins the presentation. Right. Your station sent me a rabbit's foot, which hmm. I think may belong to you, and I'm going to hold on to that while I tune into your signals. Oh, daggone it. Uh, disappointing the rest of the rabbit didn't make it. <laughs> Let's relax now. Uh, right. Breathe with me. Sure. Okay. We're breathing lighter now. A little bit lighter. There we go. The mists, the mists are separating. I see a center forming. It has a pull to it, a negative presence. I feel, I feel like this is worry. Uh, I can pop in a couple of tums if you need. No, no, we want to get closer to right. this worry. Sure. So let's go down. All right. I see faces circling in the void as we grow nearer. Really? A wiretap, you think? These are beings in the spirit realm whose energy reaches into you. I hear a voice. Sebastian, can you hear me, Sebastian? This is Colonel Stephen Prather. Uh, what can I do for you? Sebastian, don't make the mistakes I made. Protect yourself. Do you know this voice, Sebastian? It's not the old man. He was super raspy. Uh, it might be my dead Uncle Horace. Sebastian, take the time now. Secure your future. Did you love Horace? Well, he made advances after Spruce and I broke it off. Maybe my spurning killed him. Sebastian, you can make it up to me. And this is Colonel Stephen Prather. Uh, what's the proposal? Ask these people if they happen to sell whole life. All right. This is the medic. Patrol annuity schedule. Sure, sure. Uh, Horace is the old man up there? Sebastian, you've got to let go of that. Easy for you to say. Uh, you didn't lose half your lunch to the guy. I'm, I'm also sensing a lump sum payment option. How does that work? Do I get the whole sandwich back? You could buy another damn sandwich, Sebastian. I'm losing, I'm losing the signal now. Oh, that's it's disa weakening. That's disappointing. They didn't catch D.B. Cooper either, I guess. Uh, do you... Holly, do you all sell insurance policies? We do. Why do you ask? I met Beverly Yeager's sister two weeks ago at the Tacoma Lawnmower Man Expo. And she sells insurance for folks taking astral passages. And Oak. My thought is you folks should get together and pool resources. Okay. Thanks for the tip. Well, thank you both. Uh, you know, you spend a few minutes with folks of, of this caliber and you understand why the show has been such a success. For those listening, if you tune in on Lower 48 on shortwave, you can pick up Eternal Fires on the relay from CKZU, 50,000 watt. So tune in after sunset around 7 central Sunday nights. Radio End Times has a listing for the show on the Easter Blood Conspiracy next Sunday. So that'll be good for the whole family. Uh, appreciations uh, out to Stephanie for her skillful introduction, as always, and to Yuri for his mastery of the console tomorrow night statistician warren woolen talks about the phenomenon of brown water take a good look around it is everywhere you look so we're going to find out if there's anything we can do about that the coal exchange was closed for renovations as we know but 
they are making progress on the duck, which appears to be about half built. Can't wait to see the eyes on that thing light up. We do thank everyone of you listening and gently remind you not to allow the ordinary distractions to thwart your search for wisdom and knowledge. All that and more may just be revealed beyond the near horizon. Good night.